the field with Sarge. Now last week I showed you about this computer case that we turned into a tent stove and now I found this the other day and it's a roll away filing cabinet so I'm going to slowly start to convert this into a tent stove as well. So for right now there's the cover I'm going to try to figure out a way to attach that lid on there, get a grate in the bottom, and put a door on it. And then put a stack, and it looks like we'll have a tent stove. I don't know if I'll keep the wheels on it, but uh, we'll definitely think about that for a little bit. So I'll be right back with you, and I'll show you the next step in the build. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is etch out where I'm going to have the door. So with that, I'm going to use a trusty nail. And I just want to uh, let everybody know, I did it with a Dremel tool, um, just to show that anybody can do this. Now, I only did uh, three of these. Um, I went through and those were two, one was from breaking and the other one was from just getting worn out to a little tiny circle. So now we're going to go ahead and clean up the edges with a file, um, get everything all set up and then we'll go ahead and mount the uh, door with some self-tapping screws. So there's the door installed and as you can see it was done with four self-tapping screws. So nothing super spectacular, nothing fancy. I know a lot of people are going to ask why such a small door on such a big tank. That's for a couple of reasons. One is I want to limit the, the size of the wood that I'm putting in there. Now, of course, I can get some pretty decent sized logs in there if I really wanted to. You know, like this, for instance, will fit in here. But... If I get too much of a fire going in there, that's too much heat. And then we have to worry about, you know, burning down the tent or, you know, uh, overgassing ourselves. But the purpose of why I put the small door on there for another reason is eventually I want to put a hot water tank inside it with a spout on the side. And that way, as the fire is going, I'll always have hot water. But that's later on, that's another build. But for now, this is uh, a good start. We'll work on uh, getting the top uh, secured onto it um, in a way where I could take it off so it's easy to clean. And then uh, put an air intake on the front and burn it and see how she does. And then after that, we'll do a gas test and see if she, uh, if she leaks any bad gases that might kill us in our sleep. All right, so we're cutting out the opening for our stovepipe, and again, I'm doing it with the Dremel. Um, as you can see, these are the cutoff wheels. That's what this is what they get down to, and I'm just going to cut off the last bit and then secure the stovepipe. So I just got the stack uh, attached, and as you can see, I've got the fire retardant rope in there. Now, this is also a swivel, and the reason why I did that, depending upon the tent that I use, will also be dependent upon the angle of the pipe that I have in here. So now we're just basically about done. All we've got to do is put an air intake on the front and burn it and see how she does. Maybe around some of these edges here can use a little goop to seal it up. But other than that, she looks pretty good. I'm excited. All right, so I got the hole cut out for the air intake. As you can see, I made a simple slider system. Uh, I'm gonna put some screw self tappers with uh, washers on there to help guide it. And then we'll be able to pull it open and get all our air. Um, the two screws in the center there, uh, I already went ahead and drilled out. Those are going to be inner guides to keep it from, you know, getting all twisty. So we're going to get it all together and possibly get a burn in today. 
All right, so there you have it. In two hours, we have a working stove. Now, whether or not it lasts the uh, any length of time is up, you know, uh, for us to see. But uh, it's raining out right now, so we're not going to get a decent burn in, but we'll give it a try later on today. And here's the rudimentary little flue that I made. And of course, I'll cut all those screws off later on. Um, and I'm thinking that inside for a grate, I've got this old plate that was a heat shield on a gas stove. Now, I think I can get it in there and then bend it down a little bit and then still have the fire up off the bottom um, and get us some decent airflow. All right, and we're doing the first burn right now just to get the paint off it, and then we'll see how she draws. Starting to get a little bit of smoke from the paint. Fire seems to be drawing really nicely. Been getting enough oxygen. So I think this is going to be a winner. We're going to cook off all the paint and then give it a fresh coat of high temperature paint and then we'll hook it up in the shop let it run with the carbon monoxide tester going and see how she does there i think this one's going to be a winner it's definitely radiating a lot of heat almost too much heat depending upon how big your fire is now of course i've got a ripper going in there right now trying to get all this paint burnt off because uh, boy it does stink and you definitely don't want to do this inside a tent You'll gas yourself. So what we're going to have to do is cook off all this paint, clean it up with a wire brush, and then paint it with high temperature paint and then cook it again so it bakes in the paint. Now, I was really concerned about buckling because the top of this was double pane, but I was concerned that it might start to buckle and so far, I've got a little bit of a buckle by where the stack is, but not so bad to be concerned. And then, like I said, once we get all the paint burnt off, then we'll be able to detect for leaks and other stuff like that. We're burning the paint off now. Won't be much longer. Now we're starting to get the paint going here on the side. And I happen to stick my hand down on that shelf, and that's pretty warm down there. So I can definitely use it almost like a broiler um, and as a heat shield to uh, protect the ground if I ever use a tent with a ground sheet. Um, if you notice, the gravel around the side of the stove has dried from so much heat that it's given off. But I've got a real ripper going in there. Um, and I'll continue to cook it here for a couple of hours. Right now, we're only about 30 minutes in. And it looks like the paint is starting to peel around the stack, which I expected to start first. The amount of heat that's coming off this is unbelievable. I would never, ever get a fire that hot going in the stove. But no buckling, just a little indent right there. And that might have been when I attached the uh, fasteners to hold the stack in place. Oh, I heard a little buckle on the side, but not too bad. We'll see how it straightens out after it gets... Uh, to terminal and the whole stove is almost cherry but if we have to we'll put a plate on it not a problem I've already had questions about you know why do I make my stoves uh, high up off the ground <clears throat> when it would be more efficient to be lower to the ground um, for me it's because I'm disabled uh, Getting up and down off the ground uh, from my hands and knees is uh, very painful. So just being able to uh, sit in a chair and be able to feed the uh, stove or to cook on it uh, is a perfect height. Um, anything lower uh, or even higher is 
not good and it's uh, almost dangerous. And then of course for cleaning there's only six screws that hold the lid on uh, so it can be removed if uh, need be or uh, I do have a long handled trowel um, that I can use to scoop uh, the uh, ash or the uh, coals from.